Welcome back to Make Me Smart, where we make today make sense. It is Friday, the 24th of March. Friday. All right, I'm Kimberly Adams, and thank you for joining us, everybody, for Economics on Tap, which is our Friday show. So welcome to those who are on the YouTube live stream, people following along in the Fan Run Discord, or listening later on the podcast. We've got drinks, we've got our news fixes, we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to play our oh-so-fun game, Half Full, Half Empty. All right, so let's, uh, what are you drinking, first of all? So... For anybody watching on the live stream, you might notice I've got some of my cherry blossom decorations up already for the year because I know that you are not going to be around uh, next week when we have our I'm cherry not. blossom party, Kai. So I wanted to give yes. you all the cherry blossomness this week. And so I am reprising my cocktail from last year that I did for my cherry blossom party, which is a mix of sake, St. Germain and cherry blossom syrup. And I have these little tiny dehydrated cherry blossoms that I use as a garnish. And it's oh, lovely. That's very nice. I like that. I like that. Yes, It's tasty and it's pink. How is it? Is it good? All right. Mm -hmm. good. I love it. I make it often. <laughs> Uh, I'm having, oh, they changed its name. It used to be called Chainsaw Bunny, and now it's called Bunny with a Chainsaw. Uh, <laughs> from Paperback Brewing, it's a double dry hopped Hazy India Pale Ale, 8.2% alcohol by volume, one pint in this pink can. It is quite yummy. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And it's been a week. It just feels it just feels like it's been a long couple of weeks. And I was thinking about that today. First of all, I think it's been long because there's just been news and it's been kind of a grind. Uh, yes. But also, and yes, woe is me, but it's been raining so much here in Los Angeles. And it's just, it's just taking the stuffing out of us because we don't know how to do rain. You know, we're good with a couple of, you know, showers every now and then. But the rain we've had has been truly like disturbing and fatal to a lot of people as well. But that's a whole different thing. But it's been it's yeah. Been I'm kind of past the real. phase of like making fun of the people in California for being sad mm. about the weather because y'all's weather is really yeah. legit bad. And it's been nutty. I did an internship in London when I was in college oh. and I was there from September to January and I worked from about right. seven in the morning till about four in the clock in the afternoon. And Whoa. so I think I saw the sun maybe five times the yeah. entire time I lived there. And it, it does a number on you to not like Yep. get sun <laughs> especially if you're yeah. used to it yeah um so i i do feel for you yeah. and, and that's a lot of water for a system that's been in dealing with drought for so long yeah so yeah yeah although uh, i will say sorry just quickly mm. before we go to the to the chat i will say this morning when i was running up in the hills it was crisp it was 39 degrees it was cold there was lots of water and mud which was fun to run in but up in the mountains around los angeles snow again it was so cool it was so cool Wow. Yeah, it was really cool. And it was really cool. Not a soul I imagine, out there, just me. Well, that must have been particularly nice. That part. It was great. Not, oh, it was awesome. So nice. It was. It was. It was <laughs> great. No, it was, no, it was awesome. Nothing. It was awesome. It was awesome. I was up the on top of the mountains are before be the snow came. Beautiful. When oh well, yeah, out. and and you you know what's going to happen? Yeah, there's going to be a huge rush out to the places where all those wildflowers bloom. That's for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. which is great. I mean, they're going to be so pretty. Anyway, uh, all right. So should we see what people are drinking or what? Okay, let's mm -hmm. look in the chat. I saw somebody had an amazing mocktail. Wegmans Ginger Sparkling Water with Cranberry Juice. I mean, it's basic, but sparkling water and juice is like a very nice vibe. Um, mm -hmm. So let's mm -hmm. see what else. Chocolate Coconut Water with Malibu that Margie is drinking. Okay. Um, let's see. What else? What else? What else? An energy oh, drink. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Megan. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of night are you about to have? Um, <laughs> uh, I'm getting ready to go clubbing with somebody? Mitchell Car with Mitchell Hartman tonight. That's what are I'm you? Do you? Yes, I don't I know am. if you have the stamina to. Do you have the stamina to hang I with Mitchell? Know. Mitchell's like a two <laughs> in the morning know. guy. I don't yeah. know because he was like, "Oh, we can meet up around 11. and I was like, "Mitchell, yeah, <laughs> I don't know, man." <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 the the unknown truth about Mitchell Hartman is that he is a rager oh, when he God. goes clubbing. And he's out truly. He's out till like two or three o'clock in the morning. It's wild. I was, I was like, yeah. I want to be like, I'm too old for this, but he's older than me, and so he's I got don't have he's that got a couple excuse. of years on you. Mitchell does, yeah, for sure. So I, I got for a rally. Sure. I think I might have to have an energy drink. Okay, uh, Tammy's got a strawberry oh, banana smoothie. <laughs> I love that. 
uh, Redwood Empire whiskey that Diana's drinking, and everybody wants to go clubbing with Mitchell. Yes, you Ryan, really do. You really you, you do. do. You do. <laughs> Mitchell's a fun guy. Ryan Coleman's yeah. having Tattersall Distilling Old Fashioned mixed with a maraschino cherry. Bloody Mary from mm -hmm. Carter Lusher. Awesome. Bacon strip is garnished. Interesting. You know, oh, I've look, seen bacon Mar in a lot more cocktails lately. I know. I, I have actually seen that trend. I've seen that trend. Mary Apicella or Apicella, I apologize. She's having a cheer wine. Where is David mm. Gura when you talk cheer wine? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, Does he man. really like that? Well, he's from North Carolina. And when we, we did a thing in like Raleigh, Durham, probably it's mm. got to be, well, when he was here. So it's got to be like eight or 10 years ago. Uh, and we had a cheer wine. And I was like, what the hell is this? And he was like, that's cheer wine. What do you mean? What is this? It's great. And I'm like, man, it's not, David. But that's a whole different thing. Isn't whole that different wild? Thing. I right. was hired to replace David Gura. And it occurred to me the <gasps> other Were you really? Day. Yeah. Yeah. I was because when he left as the Washington reporter, they reached out to me. Dave Shaw reached out to me when I was working in Cairo and asked me to apply for this job. And that's how I ended up here because David Gura left to go to wow. television because he's so glamorous. Wow. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, David is David is a he's a he's a handsome looking gentleman. Um, he's a wonderful wow. person. <laughs> he's a good guy. Yeah. He's a good guy. All right. Enough enough gossip, we got shall news. we? We got news. Yes. All right. Go <laughs> All ahead. Right, I'm sorry. Everyone in the chat is telling me to lean so that I can they can see Jasper. There. Yeah. The cat. Love you, Kimberly. Where's everybody Jasper? happy? Yeah. There. All right. Uh, what's your news fix? Oh, all right. So mine is a story that first broke a couple of days ago, and now there have been some new developments. But the gist of the story is this. It turns out London Mercantile Exchange does all kinds of commodity trading. And a couple of days ago, it was discovered that JP Morgan, which has on its books $2 million worth of nickel as being stored in a London Mercantile Exchange warehouse, was actually literally bags of rocks. It's a crazy story. So, so let me give you that 60 second primer on commodities trading. So when, when big banks and traders and investors trade commodities, they don't actually obviously tra trade the commodity itself, right? When you buy a barrel of oil or an oil future, you're not actually taking physical delivery of, of the oil, right? It's there in a ship somewhere or in a tanker or in the case of a metal, those metals are kept in warehouses. And what happens is you trade as the market goes and there's just a logbook entry that says, okay, this $2 million worth of nickel or these bags of nickel now belong to JP Morgan. And if JP Morgan sells it, it's like, okay, now it belongs to BlackRock. And if they sell it, now it belongs to, you know, Bill Ackman or whatever. So what happened is, if, l this is literally what happened. <laughs> Somebody was walking through the London Mercantile Exchange warehouse stumbled on this bag and said, wait, that doesn't feel like nickel. That feels like rocks. They opened the bag and part of this cash of $2 million worth of nickel that JP Morgan thought it had was rocks. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. That has nothing to do with anything in the news today. There's no banking thing. There's no Fed thing. There's no Janet Yellen. There's nothing. It's just JP Morgan had $2 million worth of rocks. They literally it's got crazy. Left holding it's so the bag. wild. It's so they got left holding the bag. Very good. It's so wild. Very it's proud of myself for amazing. that. Amazing. You should be. You should be. It was a good one. Anyway, we'll put the story on the show page. It's it's so great. And then actually, what we should do, Courtney, if you're listening, and mm. you should be listening because it's your job. Um, uh, um, you know, <laughs> let me just point that out. Um, find the Matt Levine column from Bloomberg where he explains all this stuff. Uh, and it's great. And everybody should read it because it really helps you understand how commodity trading works. Like when I say mm -hmm. oil is $75 today on, on the Chicago Merck, nobody's actually paying 75 bucks and getting a barrel of oil, right? It's all ledgers and movements of, of digits and ones and zeros, right? It's not the commodity moving around. Although in the beginning of the pandemic, we had negative values for oil and we could actually talk about that later. But it's crazy how it works. And now mm -hmm. JP Morgan is stuck holding the bag of $2 million worth of rocks. I love it so much. <laughs> I love it so much. Oh, boy. Anyway. I wish yeah. that um, mine was as entertaining and fun, but it's not. It's the news. Um, so the House passed um, today a piece of GOP-sponsored legislation, which is they're calling sort of the Parents' Bill of Rights Act, right? This law, is, sorry, this bill is not going to become a law. There's no way it's making it to the Senate. 
President Biden is not going to sign it. There's no way it goes anywhere beyond the House, right? So why does it matter? Mm -hmm. Because tons of things get brought up in in Congress that don't make it anywhere. Uh, Members of Congress file bills and they have press conferences. We know it's not going to go anywhere. And so a lot of times we ignore this stuff. And there's not much attention being given to this piece of legislation because, again, it's not going to get passed. It's still important to pay attention to what is passing our representative bodies of government yeah, because sure. That's a good point. it does represent uh, in the House of Representatives what the people have sent their representatives to do and they are voting on things that represent a big chunk of America and what folks are willing to support. And, and I'll t- talk about what's in the bill in a little bit, but also even if these bills don't get passed into law federally, they can often provide a model legislation for states. Mm-hmm. And many mm-hmm. states are pursuing these things where similar legislation will pass. And we can expect to hear about this legislation in campaign ads later on, where you'll hear someone say, you know, we supported parents' rights to do X and X, and we supported the Parents' Bill of Rights, and so-and-so voted right. against parents being able to know what's going on in the schools. So these things do matter, even if they don't become law. So what's in the Parents' Bill of Rights uh, Act? So I'm reading from The Hill, which has sort of the bullet points. It increases transparency in school curriculum in that it basically requires school districts to lay out what their lesson plans are going to be, what their curriculum looks like in a way that's accessible to parents, meaning that basically anybody could probably go online, including activist groups and people who want to dictate what's in school curricula, uh, can go online to, uh, sorry, there's a lot of oh, I hear it. happening outside it's, of my it's like, it's like a, it's a ship's whistle going off back there. No, that's uh, a ship's whistle, a ship's and a horn, siren. and a fire truck was it was was it really a ship's horn yes it was also a ship's horn it was both of those things together (laughs) um anyway so it increases uh the visibility of what's in a school curriculum making it more easily accessible but also making it easier for outside groups to see what schools are teaching it requires a notification to parents of schools transgender student policies if schools have to reveal what accommodations they would make for lgbtq students and you know a bunch of other things just sort of putting things that parents can already find out about their schools, but kind of making it more publicly available, which might make it a little bit more available to people who are not parents. Mm-hmm. Anyway, obviously the Democrats are very opposed and it's a you know salvo in the culture wars, but I think it's easy to ignore legislation that we know isn't gonna become law, but it is still important to, to keep an eye on what's going on. So that's that's what I think I that's exactly right. I think that that's a super important point, right? It's really easy to say, oh, it'll never pass and then just dismiss it. But there are people who vote for this stuff, <clears throat> mm-hmm. you know, and that should be who noted. Who are representing their constituencies, you know? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. That is the okay. news. Uh, quick break. We'll be back. Half full, half empty. I did not see Drew downtown today, so I don't know who's in charge. Uh-oh. I don't know. All right, this is Half Full, Half Empty, where we go through some news that came up this week, including, I guess, bags of nickels. <laughs> That's crazy. Or lack thereof. Uh, and we're going to tell you how we feel about them. Half full, being that we're feeling a little bit more positive. Half empty, meaning we don't. And on the last question, we're going to be asking for some audience participation from those following along with the YouTube live stream. Our wonderful drew jostad is indeed out today and so instead we have the also wonderful and who i miss very dearly since i'm not on the tech show anymore marketplace tech producer daniel shin hey daniel oh, hi you two i hey. saw daniel in the office today and i was like what are you doing here man that's weird <laughs> and now here it is all right well there we go there we go yeah i mean it's a serious mm-hmm. segment and i'm here to do serious business with you too so. <laughs> oh, because you have a very serious voice because serious this is my voice. serious radio voice that's right, right. Anyway, <laughs> that's right well um we might as well just okay. kick it off with the first headline here we go yes okay. legacy legacy blue check marks are starting to disappear on Twitter. Oh, yeah. 
I saw this go by today that like after there was a date attached to it that what after April something if you don't pay the uh, money yeah. you don't get your check mark yeah. anymore. It is specifically yeah. April first. April ah, Fool's at first. Day. It's yeah. What could possibly go wrong with that? Oh my god, he's but trolling is us. It he's an trolling April us already. Fool's joke. I don't know, but for for like eighty four dollars a year, you can buy your blue check mark and give Elon Musk money. Um, I'm I'm just so completely half empty. Uh, well, I'm 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 just I'm just sorry. This is not being very coherent. Twitter right now bums me out. It used to be so useful, and also mm -hmm. so hang on a minute. It used to be super useful as a source for breaking news. It used to be super fun for me to engage with listeners and other people and and Twitter friends that I've had. There's also just a whole spectrum of the population for whom it was a cesspool and violent and gross. And I can't not acknowledge that. But now, two things. Number one, it's worse cesspool wise, because there's more anti Semitism, more misogyny and more violence. And also, it's way less useful. And Elon Musk is a jerk. So I'm half empty. I'm going to go half empty and uh, Zach Ruffin also points out in the chat that they're also adding a feature to make it possible to hide your blue check mark if you bought one, Yeah, yeah. which I think is so fascinating because if you want to still have all the perks of the blue check mark, but not have it known that you are paying money to Elon Musk, you can hide the fact or that God. you bought your popularity like it that that has so many layers of metaphor i can't even get into it uh, yeah, i'm all totally. the way empty although as useless as twitter has recently become i recently saw an ad on twitter that almost inspired me to buy something it was really? this t-shirt yeah it, it was like i was so close to purchasing this thing it was like a long sleeve t-shirt and it had two crows sitting on like a power line and it said attempted murder uh, a murder of crow and they couldn't quite get there because it was only two that's very good that's i like that. isn't it isn't that's it very, that's great that's very i almost good. bought it that's i almost good. bought it <laughs> okay that's anyway so I'm, I'm empty all, right. all the way empty all right yeah, next all, one. all the way all right yeah. next yeah. headline are you half full or half empty on 130 dollar moderna covid vaccines um, okay so I obviously did a story on this. Uh, well, not obviously, people may not have heard it. I did a story on this earlier in the week that Moderna has announced what the list price is likely going to be for the COVID vaccine once the uh, national COVID-19 emergency ends in May. And it's $130. And there was a hearing this week where uh, the Senate Health Committee, what is that, Health something? Health, labor Education, and Labor, and Pensions, yeah. Yes, yes. Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee, headed by Bernie Sanders, just ripped mm -hmm. into Moderna. And they're like, the federal government mm -hmm. and U.S. taxpayers helped pay for the development of this vaccine. How dare you charge us all this money? And, you know, most people are not going to pay the $130. Insurance companies will pay it. The federal government will pay it or a discounted version because everybody negotiates. But, I mean, I'm going to go half empty on our for-profit healthcare system in general yeah. because... Just, yeah it doesn't have to be uh, this way yeah I'm, I'm half empty um it's just it's that, what kimberly said it does not have to be this way all right next one are you half full or half empty on restaurant subscriptions i don't know what that is so essentially it's like a subscription program for your favorite what, restaurant let's say uh and this is a germane example subway you know, in case uh, they've offered something <laughs> called the foot long pass, quote unquote. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, I know the movie theaters I, have had versions of this for a while. Yeah. 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 I, I, um, look, I think if that's your thing, yes, I'm half full. If that's your thing, you should be able to subscribe and get some. One, one imagines you get a discount for subscribing and right, giving people your money in advance and then, and then, you know, being able to enjoy a discount. Yes, I'm, I'm half full. I think that's fine. I feel like I have to be half full because I actually own one of these things. Um, I mm. recently purchased a restaurant subscription randomly. I didn't, uh, a friend of mine who uh, works for the LA Times told me about this because we both live in the neighborhood and there's this restaurant chain that has a couple of restaurants in the neighborhood. And if you buy the subscription pass, 
you get reservations at any point if you call with at least half an hour notice and often it's hard to get wow. reservations and when you go you get a free appetizer and so if you go more than like four or five times in a yeah. year it's worth it and you can get your reservation like very quickly so uh i'm, I'm half full but i also like I want to believe it's because restaurants are trying to stabilize their income a little bit. And I want to yeah, like, help out yeah, local sure. restaurants. But on the other hand, it's sort of another one of these ways that we tier society with different perks for if you can afford it. And if not, you're just kind of screwed. So don't love it. So I'm only going to go half full. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with what Kimberly said. I think that's right. Half full. Fair enough. Yep. Uh, I'm doing a lot of, okay. of agreeing with Kimberly today. Just, you know. That's Just always the best way to be, Kai. It always. <laughs> Daniel can tell you. Don't I know it? Yeah, for sure. That's right. Um, all right, next one. You might need to Google it. There's a visual element here. You may have seen it, but are you half full or half empty on the new We Love New York City NYC logo? I've oh, seen man. it half right. empty. Are you? Wow, that was pretty quick. Okay, explain. Wait, let Don't me back up it. for a minute. So. All right. So, so for those who are not familiar and who were not, you know, uh, of of the 1970s in New York, there was an ad, a branding campaign for New York, New York City, which was "I love New York, I love New York." Anyway, it was I, the letter I, and a heart, and then underneath it, NY, and it was like Courier, like 42 font, right? Whatever. It was just giant. I love New York, right? And so now they have come out again. And it's it's like a we we love NYC. Is that what it is, Daniel? Right? That's right. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's we heart NYC on the bottom, and I I I don't hate it. But you, Ms. Adams, were very visceral about this. So number one, nostalgia. The there was nothing wrong with the old one. It was lovely. It was wonderful. It's the stamps. Yeah. It's like all the things. Uh, right, stamps, also. Right. It doesn't look as nice to me from like That's fair. the graphic perspective. I get that you can you can do more with it. So, you know, you could do we love fill in the blank this, we love fill in the blank that, and play off of that brand to make it a bit more inclusive. But I I feel like the I love New York was something you could put on your t shirt. But then we love NYC. Who is the we? Are we doing a royal we now? And that's kind of pretentious. <laughs> and then NYC is very different mm. than NY. And it kind of limits who is actually included because you're just talking about New York City. What about the outlying suburbs? What about the rest of the state? Maybe I love upstate New York. Who knows? It's just limiting. That's all. What? What? What's? what's what? Yes to all of that, but it's very interesting that you are so visceral about this and you're from Missouri. Because <laughs> we don't have um, anything yeah. like, well, that's not true. We have a lot. Show of, me. Like, show me. Come we have on. The show me state because we don't believe anything anybody says on first right. pass. Um, right. <laughs> um, right. That doesn't look very good in a typeface, though, you know? Um, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. No, that's yeah. funny. All right. <laughs> Sorry, Anyways. why, why Amir in the chat says, will no one think of Poughkeepsie? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, yeah. like, the arch is cool, but the arch, like, it's an arch. You go up in what? it once, and it's like, oh, you look at fields. I think okay. you, you are, you are going to get excommunicated from the Missouri. Uh, no, uh, everybody know. from Missouri knows that the arch is like the arch. It's nice. You look at it. You go up in it once. It moves a little bit too much for your comfort. You go right back down, and then you're done. Wow. Wow. Yeah, it okay. moves around at the top, by the way, if you go up into the arch. And you can feel it moving in the wind, and that's, that's not a great feeling. Kimberly Adams laying it all out here on a Friday <laughs> afternoon after a, after a, what is it, cherry blossom Tim Massa festival does cocktail. say that the city museum is better than the arch, which I will agree. The city museum is pretty, mm, yeah. Well, there you it's go. Pretty, pretty great. All right. All right. Uh, Are we on the last one? We're coming up on the yet? next, <laughs> sorry, last one, right? So, so we're going. doing, uh, if you're on the YouTube live stream, we're doing a poll as we always do. I will, of course, not be able to figure out how uh, to tell the score or whatever. So Mel's going to have to slack it to me. But um, 
Kimberly and I will fill some time while all y'all figure out how you feel about it. Daniel, let's hit the, let's hit that last number, shall we? All right. Uh, number five, final one. Are you half full or half empty on AI writing movie scripts? It's so funny because we were having a discussion about AI and chat GPT uh, earlier today. Um, I, yeah. Mm. I mean, all we're doing, as we heard from uh, Stephanie Hughes today, is sequels anyway. So I guess all the content right. is there for the AI to figure out exactly how things are going to go. Um, By the way, I'm I, being I, validated I, in the chat on all my St. Louis points about the arch and everything. So just saying. Really? What? How many yes. St. Louis people can we possibly have on this chat? Or Missouri people. I mean, apparently enough to validate me. Well, well, I guess that settles that. Uh, yeah. Fact. <laughs> well, I, I know better than to argue on this point. Uh, sorry, what was the question? Oh, AIs and movies. <laughs> sorry. Uh, so look, as Kimberly said, Stephanie Hughes did a thing on, they're all sequels now anyway. And really, you don't have to be AI. You could just be some, some freshman English composition major and you could take a script from Iron Man 1, 2, 3, and 4 and write Iron Man 5. Um, all right. So let me get really dorky here. There was a great interview on, uh, the daily with AO Scott and the host who shall not be named, who repeats all the questions and phrases them so that he repeats back to you what the person he's interviewing just said. Anyway, Tony Scott had a whole, it was, it was why he's giving up his slot as the film critic in the New York times. And one of the things he said was, they're all basically the same movie. It's Marvel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's Iron Man 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's Fantastic Four. It's whatever you do. And there's no, there's no magic left in it anymore. And so I guess, I guess if that's the way Hollywood's going, because it's making a gazillion dollars, then why not have AI write the script? Sorry, that was a little bit ranty, but yeah. I, I'm going to go... Oh, are we answering now? How many votes do we have? We have I, 172 I, votes. I, I think know. that's enough no, time. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, for Let, sure. Let's close it up. Uh, I'm yeah. going to go half full just because of some larger thoughts I've been having about AI and chat GPT, which is that I'm hoping it forces a leveling up because if indeed chat GPT can write your standard sequel movie that's so formulaic because they are formulaic then maybe mm -hmm. the movies that will actually start to be made are the ones that actually are creative that do require the human mind to stretch itself and come up with something new and different just like you know we don't spend all of our time figuring out how to type you know a perfectly formatted piece of paper uh you know essay on a piece of paper mm -hmm. because our margins and our font and our spell check is all done we instead spend our time on the words right in theory um and so maybe if we're not spending our time doing the formulaic stuff then maybe it will force us or allow us to spend our time doing something a bit more creative and that's my fingers crossed hope not that it takes over the world and condemns us all to death condemns us all to death condemns i actually kind of like condemns condemns yeah i i, I was yeah. i was just going to say i think your fingers crossed thing is is very important to note because hollywood of course is a business and hollywood's going to go for what works and what works is formulaic marvel <laughs> one two three four five Right. I'm sorry, Tim Mata says you're being awfully charitable to our robot overlords, Kim. <laughs> right, exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> no, uh, oh my goodness. Tony, who, um, if it's Tony who's doing the marketplace account in the chat, I think condooms needs to be spelled C-O-N-D-O-O-M-S, like doom at the end. Although it's is it too close to something I don't even know else. It is. Never mind. It can't be. Okay, it we're can't done. Be is that it? It can't. We're, we're done. Let's see. We're done. Jake, yeah, hit it. yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh, all right. So we are done back next week. Thanks, of course, to Daniel Shin uh, for filling in and Yay, for Daniel. all y'all for listening and dealing with us on a Friday afternoon at 
th- oh, 3.59 p.m. Oh, my God, we've gone a long time. Anyway, if you've got questions you want us to answer for a What Do You Want to Know Wednesday related to the economy, business, tech, culture, whatever is on your mind, what Kimberly and I are thinking about anything, you know how to do that. Yes, you can leave us a voicemail at 508-UB-SMART, or you can email us at makemesmart at marketplace.org. They're calling Daniel the voice of God. <laughs> I know, right? I should have known because Charlton wasn't in today, and Drew wasn't in today. I should have known something was up. Make Me Smart is produced by Courtney Berg. Secret today's episode was engineered by Jake Cherry. Drew Jostad, who's taking the day off, wrote the theme music for Half Full, Half Empty. Antonio Barreras is our intern. And Mel Rosenberg was running the chat and helps with the spelling oh, on condooms. And the oh, team wait. behind our Friday game is what? We're not going to make the answer. Well, so what were you going to say? <laughs> Susanna Romick says, we didn't talk about how the audience voted. I think it was like 72 oh to something, 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 right? It was you guys were yes, wet. All right, so, so here sorry. it is. I'm scrolling no, no. back. Sorry. It's 82% so, half right. empty about right. AI writing movie scripts and 17% right. half full. So I clearly lose and you win. Yeah. Well, there we go. And all the rest of the credits, whatever. You know, they don't care. No, it's important. Also, Mel they don't, Rosenberg they don't and Emily McCune and Antoinette Brock are behind the Friday game, Half Full, Half Empty. And Marissa Cabrera is our acting senior producer. Bridget Bodner is the director of podcasts. And Francesca Levy is the executive director of digital. We love giving credit. Right, to, Everybody gets their flowers. To, to be clear, I just thought we were blowing off the bosses. So, you know. <laughs> whatever <laughs> you, you weren't you weren't trying to cast shade on emily I, 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 i'm mel not throwing emily shade on, on mel and emily and antoinette it's 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 all the bosses you know my bigger and above yeah. screw them that's right <laughs> okay oh got it God. all right goodbye everybody right. thank you oh for hanging Lord, out with I'm us for this fired. very thank long you. friday bye. show i drank all of the that was a lot there and i had all